You're listening to the Classic Gamers Guild Podcast. This makes my nipples hard. Hey there, welcome to the Classic Gamers Guild Podcast. Today, Paul and I are chatting about the best King's Quest game. Or, which one is it? Dun, dun, dun. I don't know, Anna. <laughs> Why don't we find out? <laughs> This is so manufactured. I'm so sorry. I've, I've let us down this road and, well, we're on it now because, you know, why not? So I'll tell you, buddy, I'll tell you what's not the best King's Quest game. Okay. It's not the, it's not the second one. P.U. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, all right. For real. With the best King's Quest game, but real quick, we're going to go through all the ones that are not the best King's Quest game. It's going to be a really fun reveal and you guys are going to love it. <laughs> you might. I, I'm already personally just hating it, and it was my idea, so I have to kind of champion it bravely in front of Anna right now. But, but, but it doesn't matter. Here's so so King's Quest Two is not. It's not the best. I don't. King's Quest Two is is the is the worst King's Quest. Do you agree? <laughs> uh, yeah. It's one and two kind of like I liked one. I don't. I don't have as much fond memories of two as in like. I've probably played one multiple times because it was the first. I've played two because I'm doing a full run through, but I've never gone back to two as being, oh man, I really got to run through two again. Right. That's pretty, you know, it's interesting because I was just thinking how two is probably the weakest space quest and two is probably the weakest Larry as well. Mm hmm. It's a hard to follow something that was a groundbreaking success. A little bit, I think. That, I mean, it happens with albums sometimes, or it even happens with authors, or heck, even sequels to movies. You're like, oh man, the second one sucked, but the third one was pretty good. Right. I was just thinking that, like, in a trilogy, the second's usually the weakest as well. But I think with mm -hmm. cinema, it's different because the second one is burdened with like a lot of setup work and, and things like that. Like, there's almost, I feel like there's a lot of reasons. But anyway, bloody, it doesn't matter. The first one, we're not going to pick on the first one. It's not the best one, but it's, 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 you know, like it certainly is of one of the games. ones in, it is in there. It is in there. Yeah. <laughs> it's, that, is, that is entirely what she said, too, I believe. So, but do like it's, it's fine. You have to, like, you have to retrieve the stolen treasures. So it's kind of one of those, this is what's been stolen and you have to go find it unless somebody steals it from you first. <laughs> yeah, they're, 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 they're busy figure. They're busy inventing the, the graphic adventure. You know, you can't pick mm -hmm. on them. They, they, how much how much weight can they carry on their shoulder? They're like, look, we're we're in, we're in the middle of inventing a whole genre right now. Just cut us some slack. So that's that's this is us cutting King's Quest One some slack because it's you know it's it's one of the greats or whatever. All right, uh, I really like Five, but it's not the best King's Quest. I know. Could you right. tell us some of us a little bit about those hand painted backgrounds? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll tell you my perspective on them. That was it. Was the first game I had ever played that had hand painted backgrounds, and I played it slightly before I played Space Quest Four. So I was I I was not impressed with the fact that it wasn't a parser game, but I was impressed with the fact that the graphics were pretty and hand painted. And I see. I, I like Five a lot. I. I it's just, it has so many problems and there's so much also, also, it's, you know what it is? Five is a great walkthrough game. <laughs> yeah. But, I never but, used one though. I, I found five much too easy because it wasn't a parser and I never used a, uh, any kind of a hint to play it. And I, I played it when it first came out. So I was just going to say that that's the difference. So I didn't play it when it came out. Cause like, yeah, I would have had the time if I, if I was playing it when it came out, but, but yeah. I, I don't have I, I don't we'll get into this more later, but I don't have any nostalgia for the, the whole King's Quest series, maybe believe it or not. Um, okay, so so it's not we know it's not one, two or five. It's it's not three. I, if you think it's three, then you're you're <laughs> bloody <laughs> path. That's the, what kind of <laughs> champions three. It's it, it is just the most brutal game I think ever designed. Most adventure game. It's so mean. <laughs> wow. 
It's yeah. one of those ones, if you got it first and you and your siblings figured it out together and, you know, you even figure out the secrets of the cheats and there are people like you out there and I bow down to all of you. I do. And, and say, uh, wow, I am so impressed because one, two and three intimidated the hell out of me when I was a kid, especially because it didn't pause when you typed. So I didn't even play through them until I had a walkthrough book, Korish's video game guide. Well, Anna bows down to you, and I called you a path and a m So there's, <laughs> <laughs> there's our split opinions. Depending on, I mean, three, it looks like Gold Rush. Mm -hmm. So that's good. Yes. And it's got magic, and it's got spells, no, and it's my, got my secret list passages. Is done. Yeah, my list is over, actually. I say <laughs> It stops and it looks like Gold Rush. And no, I, three, three, is actually, three is actually kind of a lot of fun in a sense. Like, okay... I was running through the whole series back to back to back and I was using universal hints and the, I really liked the timing factor of three because mm -hmm. I could just, if, if when it got too much, I hinted my way out. So like mm -hmm. if I was playing this when it came out and, and yeah, this would have taken years, but I did, mm -hmm. I did actually kind of enjoy the fact that he had to get back home for, for my nan and nan. And, mm -hmm. but there is things in retrospective where you're just like, dude, how was I supposed to know that? Like, thank God Google, you know, Sierra Chester helped told me like, there's no way I would have ever, it would have literally taken years for me to beat that game, which, you know, was kind of the point. So touche, mm -hmm. I suppose, you know, theoretical <laughs> self. But the the point is, is that three is, three is a burden. There's, <laughs> that was supposed to be nicer than I had been. Three is, three is a bit of a slog, man. It's, it's just, no, three is cruel. There we go. There, wait, that's not nice either. All right, forget it. It's not three. Three is not the best. Not the best face quest. Whoops, we're not. This is, this Please is, quest. Yeah. No, King's Quest. Thank you. I'm stuck in a bit of a nosedive there. Just taking it's this episode thing. with me. <laughs> it's okay. You take, well, I just, I was playing Please Quest before we started playing King's Quest. And then Paul interrupted my playing as I was just getting to the first crime scene. And he was like, hey, Anna, wait. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, okay, what's up? And then he's like, well, you know, you don't have time to finish Police Quest right now because we need to now, like, talk about every single King's Quest game quickly. And we have to record here in a day or two. I'm like, okay, so... That's that's where we're at now. She's been a sport. I've been it's been, I've been very bossy all week, and and she's really put up with a lot to get us here. And and look, my contrived little convoluted intros almost come to an end because now there's only two King's Quests left, and and hmm, these are well, probably the hmm. two most beloved uh, in the series to be left. We're now facing six and and four. So and so eight. Anna, what is what is not the best King's Quest game? Eight. Fuck, is I, not like, the best King's honestly, Quest game. Honestly, not you, Connor. We're not even... <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Thank you, though. Let's get that fodder. We're, we're done with that. It's definitely, of course not. That I have now met... I have met a few Connors now, and no offense to all Connors listening, I'm not talking about you. But all of the other ones I've met in person recently, <laughs> it has not been a good scene. So... Just, just saying. I still have no comment. The only piece of hate mail we've ever gotten on this show was from when I went on a tangent about how Connor is not a heroic name. And they're like, what yeah. about Connor McCloud? And I'm just like, you know, I forgot about that movie during the rant. Okay. Right. That one, that <laughs> one was fine. <laughs> okay. Okay. So anyway, eight's out of the way. So, so now just, uh, Anna, what's, what is not the best King's Quest? Oh man, such a difficult decision knowing that I love parser games, knowing that I liked the simplest of graphics, knowing that King's Quest VI was not my first King's Quest game. I suppose for me, it's not King's Quest VI, but I like it. It's nice. It's cool. It's whimsical. See, this this was fun. Now everyone's like, oh, this, this episode's going to be about King's Quest Four. The whole rest of the episode, you guys, you'll see. But real quick, let me shit on Six because i got to explain why it's not Four. So Six was fine. I like Five mm -hmm. better than Six. And I think that's a slightly unpopular opinion because it, it feels like Six is usually – people seem to usually like Six or Four the most. And I, I, I liked Five more than Six. Six was – I didn't really like the art in Six. I think that's a lot of it. So mm -hmm. there was something about the art that just missed a little bit. And and I feel like Sierra always missed a little when they tried to look like Lucas. There's there mm -hmm. was there was games and moments where they, they went like a little bendy or a little cartoony. 
and and it it just they, they weren't it, it wasn't that wasn't them they I, I like when they were just like mimicking the real world i guess you'd say it doesn't matter six six is fine it's pretty it's okay i've it's, known it's, Nostalgia it's, for the whole series so it's keep that in mind as i'm being a little harsh towards all these but six was it was it was like i had fun playing all of them except for two and three um, but, but six can mess you over if you do the wrong thing at the wrong time still. And it wasn't yeah. quite as polished as it could have been, but, uh, yeah, maybe it was, I, part of it might also just be the overarching story of six. Like I, I liked mm -hmm. being Graham having to get his family back in five, but then I liked, um, mm -hmm. being Alexander and, and, and the, the, the love thing and just, yeah, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But, um, I like the guard dogs because I, I have a I have a Sheltie, so the and there was a uh, there was a little, um, you know, one of the guard dogs was a collie, which is like the same same thing, just bigger. Mm -hmm. But um, okay, so right, so 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 we're talking about King's Quest Four for the rest of the episode. We're all done. It was a little gimmicky. I just I thought it'd be fun. I don't know. But Does that mean the... I can go back and do my original intro now? <laughs> <laughs> we should put a timestamp in, like for when you're tired, when you're done with Paul's bullshit, you can just jump. To 18 minutes in. All right. But anyway, we're, we're talking about four. It's the best King's Quest game. It's true. Now you, the astute listener, might say, well, hey, didn't you guys talk about this game before? Actually, Maybe. yeah, but Paul wasn't there. Right. So. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> and we weren't focused on comparing versions, which we're going to touch a little bit into today. And uh, so, you know, give and take. Yeah. Mostly and selfishly, I, I wasn't there. And, and really... The, we're we're kind of we've got like a little plan series where we're going to go forward and compare the, the all the the four Sierra remakes to their originals. So we mm -hmm. were we were very police quest centric for a little bit until until that idea was, you know, burst or a less gross way of putting that. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know why, but but I was like, okay, well, police quest. This King's Quest Four is kind of Anna's police quest to me, right? Mm -hmm. It's like your first, like as far as games we could play like with our eyes closed and just like. We, mm -hmm. we know it intimately, and and so this was like the the closest to Anna's heart, and it's my favorite King's Quest. And 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 there's so many great things about this game. I'll, I'll say later that that solidify the the admiration I have for adventure games without nostalgia that I want to talk mm -hmm. about later. That that it's just yeah, it seems like a really good game to go into, and and we didn't get to talk about it together, right? Because I I guess I wasn't there. I think Sarah was, was that you and Sarah and Rick a long yeah, time ago? Yeah, a long time, a couple of years ago, actually. It was, it was kind of my introduction, at, like not my first, yeah, pretty much my first episode. So. Right. Interesting. It's been a few years now, definitely. And I, I'm still using the same microphone. <laughs> Cause it still sounds lovely, especially, especially with these neat little settings and buttons that, are, that we click onto it. It makes it sound good. But we going forward, we have some good, some good episode stuff. Just so you guys know, we're going to be comparing the SC, the, uh, the SCI to the age, the remakes to the quest for glory makes that complicated on a very pedantic nerd level. Cause both quest mm -hmm. for glory or SCI just, you know, a little bit of uh, you know, AGI engine version 2.5.1. Yeah, it's just we're just gonna get real decimal sound in, in a second if we don't, of, we don't steer it straight. But but basically, we're gonna be comparing the the remakes to the originals in like a little mini series, I guess you could say. Um, but first, actually, before that, in next episode, we're gonna sit down with Adventure Game Geek and talk about spooky episodes. Or, or I mean, Ooh. shows stuff, not shows or episodes. Like I blew it. I had two <laughs> two goes at it. Neither of them uh, was a game, just the word game. But okay, it was okay, the ghosts. Where do we where do we start with with King's Quest Four? Well, let's start with uh, well. So you said you didn't play it when you were little or anything. You played it as an adult, right? I played it when I was nine years old, and it was my first game. It took me over a year to complete. As I've said before, I did not win a trip to London, as it says on the front of the box. Win a trip to England or one of other two thousand other prizes. Which, by the way, I'd love to hear what some of them were. Right, and if anybody won them, looking at the same stickers, yeah. details inside. No, I will not. Mm -hmm. I'm in the middle of a show right now. I can't. Um, so you played it as as a kid. Did you get it when it came out? Came out like literally, or or close to the time when it when did it come out? Eighty eight. So I would have been about ten. So yeah, probably about eighty nine, ten or eleven, something like that. And was so. All right, just give me your origin story with the game, actually, because I don't think I've ever heard that. 
Oh, gosh. My dad brought it home, and I had never, outside of Donald Duck's playground, I'd never played a game where you had a character that could walk in a 3D kind of around the screen area. And, like, a big deal. My dad said, hey, hey, just so you know, there's a mouse aspect to this game. And I'd never used a mouse with a computer game before. None of the games that I had used mice at all. So I popped it into my mom's computer, who at the time we had a four megabyte hard drive and one floppy drive. We didn't have the two yet. And after doing a partial install and getting it up on the amber monochrome screen, we were at the scene with the cliffs and we were able to not figure it out at all. So I took the mouse and I held the button down and I tried to guide her, like gliding a sh you know, on a shuffleboard or something, like holding down the button I knew about on this her. Effect. Yeah. We're, yeah. We're... <laughs> to make her move. And then I tried like holding it down and getting her to follow it like it was a magnet or something. And anyway, she kept falling off the cliff and dying over and over. And I'm like, Dad, Dad, I can't get this game to work. And he came over and he's doing the same thing. He's like, well, just have her follow the mouse. And then we figured out that you click. And it's that moment when the clicking clicks, when you make that realization, like, I can still remember the feeling of the realization of the concept about how the whole game worked. And then, yeah, and then that was it. I played that game and I still remember like, oh, I can't figure it out. The troll cave was scary. Everything was amber. My dad being like, it's okay, Anna. Just go for a walk and have some hot chocolate and go to bed. And when you wake up in the morning, you know, give it another try. So a lot of those concepts came from me <laughs> playing this game. And then go ahead and do that for 16 more months until you yes. finish the game. <laughs> <laughs> it's true with not full points true true to form when i played the agi version for the first time i was at one a hundred and uh 22 points or what was it yeah 122 points out of 130 or whatever it was meant to be i was like not quite there eight points short is my point yeah you were close i don't yeah. know it's at a no 230 cigar. if that helps is that useful that's it okay yes yeah i got 222 awesome. thank you no no worries it's just <laughs> <laughs> Happy to have said something useful. It's, it's <laughs> six twenty minutes in. Okay, so this was this was like your. I didn't see. I, I don't think I knew that, but I probably did and forgot kind of thing more likely. But so this was like your first, 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 first. Yeah, this one and then Leisure Suit Larry and Police Quest both came in rolling right like later in the time period while I was still playing it a little. Yeah, got it. Okay, very cool. All right, so I, yeah, mine's quick because I, I just have the opposite. I, I played it as a as a as a was a very grown person, and and um, and it was I well I'll just I guess I'll just say now that that it, it showed me that nostalgia well nostalgia shouldn't be underestimated or anything like that. And it's extremely potent and powerful. That it's not necessary for for me to have this. Really proved to me that that I I could love a Sierra game without nostalgia because because mm -hmm. I was just giddy. When, when I played this game for the first time, when, when the, specifically when the night cycle had happened. And I've said this on the pod so before, so I'll make it quick, because I think I've said it like four times before. But it, like, I somehow wasn't, I never had it spoiled. It was never spoiled to me that the night cycle thing happens. And, mm -hmm. and I'm, maybe if I had seen the screenshot of zombies, or so, it just never clicked. I, I was not prepared for it at all, emotionally mm -hmm. speaking. And then all of a sudden it turned into nighttime and the whole game just shifts from like whimsical and, I don't know. Yeah, whimsical fantasy to to something more insidious. Yeah, and, kissing frogs to digging graves of dead babies. Right. Really well put. Thank you. That's the exact emotion I'm trying to capture. Is it's just the shock of how vanilla it was to to how kind of dark it just so very suddenly gets. Um, not to say there isn't like some spooky stuff going on before that, but but really it, the whole game just changes personality. It's like it it felt like. Um, Jacqueline Hyde like it just it, mm -hmm. it, and I wasn't aware that it was a Jacqueline Hyde story I thought it was just just a Jacqueline story or whatever the nice one is mm -hmm. doctor who's the nice one yeah the Jackal Dr. Jackal right okay look we're clearly in some trouble here from bringing up <laughs> to see which one of <laughs> Jacqueline Hyde is the evil one but the point is is that it, it evoked emotions in me that that I get from adventure games, but usually more like modern ones like Unavowed or, or Golden Wake where it's just like oh my god this is so much fun or X, Y, and B thing happened and so cool that I really actually want to literally tell a friend right now um, mm -hmm. to get that from an old Sierra, you know, an old Sierra SCI zero game was amazing. Like I was, I was, it was, it was just cool to know that like these games still have that kind of power and sway and, 
Yeah. Uh, this game has real feelings. I mean, it's like when I was a kid, the, the things that scared me, that gave me the heart jumping outside of like, obviously the ogre grabbing you or whatever is the trees and the ax. That always made me feel scared even after I intimidated them. And uh, the first time like I got picked up by the goons and I kept running away and restoring my game after they'd go to grab me because I thought I did the wrong thing. It took me forever to realize I had to like not make it through that screen without getting grabbed because I was just to so scared to be uh, pulled away by them. Right. It's like very real, very real feels for me. In, and then at nighttime in the mansion and you walk by the mirror and you can see your reflection just caught in the light. And the clock, the broken clock, which actually has more meaning in the AGI version because you have to look at the time it gets dark, specifically at like the nine o'clock as compared to it's not event-based in the original version. See, I like what you mentioned about the carrying away because that reminds me of a, of a feeling of playing games when we were kids that, that I'm sure everybody can relate to where it's like you're a kid and like the, the scary thing, the inevitable scary thing happens and you have seen it before, but it's still so unsettling that you just quickly like click out of it. Or it's just like, you know, you, like you said, you get picked up by the bad guys and they start to carry you. So you just quickly reload so you don't have to like <laughs> suffer the fear of it anymore. Or like you release yourself from its grips. And then, yeah, it's powerful in the sense too, when the night, when it turns into night is like everything that you suddenly can't trust your environment. And that's, mm -hmm. that's really, that was really cool and interesting where it's like, you know, you got, you, they give you time to get to know the world and then you just suddenly you can't trust anything in it because uh, everything's all night and evil and there's zombies and, you know, anything feels possible now because of zombies. So speaking of night, I guess we should say for those that haven't actually played the game, the whole game is essentially the, in, instead of being Sir Graham, you're his daughter and he's going to die. And it's up to you, Rosella, to save his life via third-party influence. Right. Yeah, that's a good... Okay, yeah, to walk to walk everyone through the game. So I guess a really quick synopsis would be, like, King Graham is, is, has a heart attack, and you're his daughter, Rosella, right? And so you are transported to a faraway land by a fairy named Janista, and she basically says that in exchange for getting her stolen talisman back... Um, yeah, it, it's, it's, help me out. Well, How she would send, it? she'd send you home if you got the talisman back, and she has the magic to do it. And in doing so, she's like, "You should probably pick up this fruit because right. I'm going to kill a few birds with one stone. You get your fruit, I get my talisman, and you know everybody's golden." Right, and it, it's quite manipulative because <laughs> the whole game is quite manipulative. Christ, it is, it is. So I was playing it last night, just thinking, like, you know, that was real sneaky of her. There's nothing about this. There's nothing about her talisman that ties us to the flower. So she's more mm -hmm. just like, you know, hey, while you're there, <laughs> just pick up my talisman for me. And and anyway, so going quickly through the, the rest of the summary is uh, Roselle obviously has to, to face a bunch of issues. And then uh, she eventually gets captured by the evil, is it Lolati? Lo Lolette? <laughs> How are we saying this, people? The big L. It's it's an inner wrestle because again, this being a childhood game, I always called her Lou, Lolette. But then when I did the last podcast episode with Sarah, I, she was like, "Oh, okay, no, it's Lo, Lolot, I think. Huh. Well, the, but I'm not fully sure. So I'm just if I say Lolette, everybody just know who I'm talking about because you get it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I'm gonna try and just stick with the witch. Um, mm. So Rosella. Well, no, okay, we don't have to ham fistedly say the ending. I don't even know why I got that written down. No. Um, all right, so let's go back to the beginning. Yes. Um, and, and the opening scene. And I, I have a quick note I'd like to say about this because in research for this episode, one of the things I was looking at was the critical, how the game was received and, and how, what the critics thought of it and the, just the public reception of it in general was. And I found a bunch of, a bunch of interesting evidence of like, like basically people – Okay, let me stay, take one more step back and say that if if you're not aware, this game was marketed in a pretty cringe way of, of being emotional. Because there was that, what was the ad where it's like... Uh, can, can computer it, games make you cry? Thank you. <laughs> right, it's just, ugh, yuck. It was, <laughs> and the ad just got that Michael Jackson ass looking picture. Of, uh, it's just the worst. Um, just know, that's what Paul wanted to show you all, his comparison between the two. But I have prevented it, and yet I have no control over it. 
Yeah, no, she's she's prevented it, guys. She know. <laughs> <laughs> Um. So it, it, right. So they, they and they did that because during a screening, when they were talking about the story and they gave the initial promo, they noticed that a few people in the house didn't have dry eyes. So it wasn't actually even from the playing of the game that the idea came from. It came, I mean, from another notion where they had already been contemplating that idea, and then it followed through with a promotional work. Right, and and so everything that I found was was. Like kind of fortifying how genuine that is. Like so, so mm-hmm. a lot of like a lot of reviewers were were praising it for its emotional depth, especially the opening scene with King Graham's heart attack, and and it was just interesting to me because it represents a lot of things that we'll never get back again that we've had to sacrifice or like pay the. It was just the, the cost of the internet, <laughs> the cost mm-hmm. of the technology, and the the, the the good things that we have today. One of the costs is is this because I think a lot of the the Playing, playing the scene back, I'm trying to think how to frame this, but playing the game back yesterday, uh, the way that King Graham has his heart attack and sets you on a mission, it's very short without even mm-hmm. being like, crit- like critical of it or, or harsh on it or anything like that. It's very short and very basic. But I think what gets lost is for all of the, the, let's say, fans of the game that waited like years for, I don't know, maybe what was it, two years? Yeah, that's plural. So waited years, I can be <laughs> dramatic with that. They, they waited a long time to get to get their hands on the next King's Quest. And and they've presumably, a lot of them have, have already gotten to know, you know, who King Graham is um, mm-hmm. at, at this point. And like the, the, some of the things that he's done or been through. And, and so you can't wait, like, you, you know, I guess what I'm trying to say is if we could remember this for the, for the people that were emotionally impacted by it to remember it as this was like a sitcom to them, I guess. Well, not sitcom. This was like, you know, a TV show to them in the sense where they were attached to the characters and the family. Mm-hmm. And so to finally like the new season, let's say comes out and, and the main guy, main character has a heart attack right off the bat. It's like, yeah. it was, it was kind of devastating to people. And it just, it takes a lot to even get us back to being able to imagine that. Like, like how are they, how are they Super being valid. genuine when they said that this game could bring a tear to your eye like really because it's just like three mm-hmm. screens and, and and some pretty static text but if you take all into consideration then mm-hmm. then yeah it becomes understandable so anyway yeah I, that was my my biggest note for the opening of the game was how how it did it did actually do what it said it would do in ads which would mm-hmm. you know make you feel emotional yeah because, yeah, I've never really gotten emotionally attached to games in that way. Like, I've never, I mean, games don't really make me emotionally feel things, except for, like, anger if I keep dying or losing. <laughs> I mean, I don't get pulled into the emotion of a, you know, a movie very easily either. But a game, perhaps even less so. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Well, basically, oh, yeah, the only the other note I have for this is... is uh, King, <laughs> my only other note for the opening scene is, is, scene is Graham's nostrils, OMG. Because, mm-hmm. man. It's so it, big. Yeah, really nostrils. You can look into artwork. those caverns, Holy yeah. Like, Every scene he's in when he's having a Do you the hire the nose picker? The yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bring in the royal nose picker. Hang on. Let him get the clamps. Right yeah. there, there's, 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 the, the, there's the chasm, you know, bloody. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the real chasm. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. So Graham has his heart attack, and um, Ros- Rosella, uh, you know, is is obviously devastated. But then she looks into the magic mirror where she sees Janesta Jackson, and Janesta <laughs> Janesta transports her to Tamir and manipulates mm-hmm. her into starting her quest. And so that brings us to the arrival into Tamir. Hmm. And uh, and from that point, it should have R and D. A lot of uh, back and forth and figuring things out. A lot of actually, okay, again, is this, I, I haven't fully decided then, but I'm still talking about the version I played because it, it shocked me all the way through when little things like, you know, when you go in to clean the dwarves house and the music's playing, it only plays through the music track like once through the loop and then it stops and you stand there in silence or clean in silence after that. Mm, right. What, it's funny because it's, it's it almost makes sense that would stick with you because it was 
the first game with sound card support. I think period. Like it was definitely the first adventure game with sound card support. But, but I, I didn't it... have it. I had PC speaker oh, only. So the AGI with PC speaker, I'm telling the very specific differences between that and the PC speaker with the uh, the SEI version and or the AGI version. Sorry, and uh, no SEI, right? Whatever I'm talking about. Hang right, on. AGI EGA. and SEI, you got it. But yeah, yeah they're, 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 they're all EGA, right? So so yeah. SEI and AGI, yeah. But yeah, the other thing too is it doesn't like when you type in the text for it tells you which page to go to in the book to do the copyright you just it just appears right underneath it and nothing pauses when you're typing it which changed how i play it because i would just type and have my thing to say load it up before i'd go through the door mm -hmm. to accost the ghost or whatever it is totally changed and oh you could and push enter and click through low let <laughs> low lot her talking so you didn't have to wait for the whole scene to go through bit by bit. You could click through it. In in AGI? Yeah. So you can't miss. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, Very different. Yeah. And the music was entirely different, of course. Um, right. Because since the AGI had no sound card support. Now I get it. Sorry, I, m I missed the AGI part when I started that earlier. But now I'm, I'm fully on the, on the same page with you. Right. So without that, you had... Yeah, the EGA version feels safer. The uh, AGI version takes me back to King's Quest 1, 2, and 3. Um, like, for example, in the AGI, when the shark comes, you can't get away, no matter how put low you put your speed. And if the whale comes, it freezes you on the screen, no matter where you are, so you can't swim away. It's, it's all just that little bit more dangerous. In the next version, when they updated it, you could get away from the shark if you just swam near the bottom of the screen, which is my usual tactic. Well, I had to save and restore to get to the island across the one piece of ocean from the dock at the Fisherman's Wharf. I had to do that for, I don't know, probably 30, 40 times. Everybody in the house was making fun of me because they kept hearing, oh, that's that dying music again. Right. Okay. So you're saying, that, and that makes sense. You're saying the SCI version was safer. Than yeah, the AGI. very, 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 very much so. It does. It changes the gameplay when it doesn't pause when you type. It, really it does. does. It really does. Yeah. And it's, yeah. And safe is exactly what you sacrifice. Cause the plus mm -hmm. the, the pro to be, to the AGI typing is that when it's getting monotonous, like space quest one or two, imagine. And, and, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of walking from left to right, like, you know, from one side of the room to the other side, like you could at least start typing open door as you're walking still, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it's like, it, it helps in that sense of like the flow of things, but if things are sketchy and dangerous, that's the con because then it doesn't pause the game for you. And it's, and it's just like, it's, it's, it speeds it up because I'm typing, I'm typing as I'm walking. And instead of having to go to the uh, wall to type, look at latch, I'm typing, look at latch as soon as I've walked into the room. So I guess in an ADD kind of way, you're filling in those little time spots that would other be left just with walking and then typing. So you're kind of compacting the game in a way a little bit. That's exactly it, right. That's exactly the pro I would say to that approach mm -hmm. to the AGI, the old school AGI approach. The pro is, is, is satisfying like a, a little ADD sort of mentality where it's like, well, I can mm -hmm. type open door while he's walking to the door. And yeah, mm -hmm. it, it helps. It does compact or helps with the flow of things. But, but again, the cost of that is, is that it doesn't pause the game. And then when you have to type a command quickly, it's very mm -hmm. panicky feeling. It's like, you just, you, you kind of are, I don't know. You, you, it's like I already know I'm going to fuck up the typing, right? Like off the yeah. bat, which is probably what messes it up. But alas, and and yeah. So, the, but yeah. So anyway, it does it doesn't feel as safe, which makes total sense. The AGI. So so and for everyone listening to Anna, being so much more intimately familiar with this game than I, this week was my second playthrough ever. It was God mm -hmm. knows how many for her, but so Anna decided to play the AGI version, and I played the SCI mm -hmm. version. I played the SCI, but I will say. Just doing nerd stuff and, and, you know, looking through all the differences before and resource files and nerd stuff I used to do when I when I needed a game to make, let's say. <laughs> the, I, I kind of like the a lot of the AGI art a little better. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. There's something about the ditheriness of the SCI one that, that, that loses it a little bit. Like, the AGI version is smoother. That's like my it, first comment when I, I busted out the EGA ver or the other version, the SEI version, just to be nerdy afterwards. And, and my first comment in capital letters is, holy shit, so much dithering. Right. Exactly. Yeah, there's a ton of it, like everywhere. And it's, it's, it's not and bad. And that's really but... the only graphical upgrade technically. I mean, in between the two versions, as uh, colors and things go, that's essentially what it was. They added dithering. Tons of dithering. Yeah. 
Some yeah. random screens are just different ways that aren't fun to verbally explain to people. You know, for, for mm-hmm. an auditory medium that we're on, really we can't go too much farther with that. But I can just say that the, the AGI, yeah, it's more, it captures some of more of the charm of King's Quest 3 or Gold Rush. Because the, the, if you just look at like a pine tree alone, um, mm-hmm. is a great example. Because the SCI one, like they do, there's a lot of line work, like almost unnecessary amounts of line work in the trees. And it makes it mm-hmm. look a little scribbly. Whereas the mm-hmm. HI one is just like controlled by just the hues and the lighting differences. And yeah, I don't know. I like, I'd like the way the HI one looks better. Is That's all I'm trying to say here. What about you? Um, it's, it's beautiful. It's, it's, it's simpler. Everything is a little bit funnier. Like, okay, there's no graphic when Roberta Williams says, hey, you died. Better luck next time. You just have to type restore or go into the menu to restore it's, afterwards. Right. Yeah. But anyways, yeah, it's, it's fine. I think it's cute. I like the less graphics. It was, it was, I showed Paul, I took a video of Rosella walking because in the AGI version, she looks like her face is like ever so slightly forward. And like, she's leaning forward. Like she's either being like super, like, I need to go talk to the manager or or like, you know, just she's (laughs) high and she's walking funny with her head forward. But it's very determined looking to me like, Hmm, with like, I can picture her little arms swinging at her sides with her elbows. Ben, she's like, I've just got to go befriend this unicorn or something. There's a Karen vibe too. Yeah, she's totally I like trying, yeah. <laughs> dry, dry <laughs> swimming or whatever. I messaged you, but it, it looks like it looks like she she's walking uphill, but it's flat, right? It's <laughs> kind of leaning into <laughs> it a little. Right. Yeah, <laughs> and and the music's different. It's it's a tiny bit like there's some discord to it. I I said in a text message to Paul, and he said I had to repeat it here, so I copied it. But the musical differences are stunningly different and familiar the same because it really is. It's the same tune, but they've added this little like dark melodic undertone mm-hmm. to like all of them. Like when the goons come, or when you're cleaning the house, or at the ogres, it doesn't matter. And it is just like. It gives you that feeling like, I don't know, the butterfly effect or like deja vu, but not quite. Like I'm in a slightly different parallel universe because everything is so familiar, literally different. It was kind of a cool effect. It made me excited to want to play the game again just because of those differences. Yeah. Yeah. And I should say, I want to slightly rescind to where saying AGI looks better. It, does, it doesn't look better when it comes to the sprites. Because mm-hmm. you you reminded me of like the, the goofy walking. Because just Rosella's sprite in general is much chunkier and and as as you would expect for AGI. And so. Roberta's painting, right? Like I showed you that. Come <laughs> right. on, does yeah. that, like in the newer one you could almost imagine? Hey, I guess that is Roberta Williams that's like looking over towards the latch in the door in the mansion. But when you're playing the AGI version, you're like, well, that's a blob representative of a human, basically. Right. Yeah. Ba- basically. Yeah. It's. You could tell the game was designed um, for SCI and then scaled mm-hmm. back because there's just that there's certain parts that need the detail that they don't have. And that's, the AGI that's when it's was first. first, man. Well, I, yeah, it was. It was. They decided that, from what I understand, they decided to scale it back for like a sales perspective, as as opposed mm-hmm. to do the SCI later. They're more like, we're going to, we're going to do from, and I could be wrong. Cause this is an old memory from reading Sean's book, but I think it was like developed around, if, if not at the same time, do you, did mm-hmm. you do fresh research on this before I shoot from the hip here? No, this is okay. also probably coming from back reading things about it. Okay. But, but yeah, I, I looked at dates a little bit briefly and then some Wikipedia entry or something. Okay. All right. So we're both iffy on, on the exacts, but I think, I think it was, I think it was developed around the same time just so they could sell it. Uh, in other words, they had the SCI technology when, when they designed the game. So this here you go. Point. I think you're, you're correct. Sierra. Okay. Yes. The AGI version of the game was released, but it was co-produced and released with the SCI version for customers who could not meet the high hardware requirements of the new SCI engine. So therefore technically they were produced and published simultaneously. So. Okay, perfect. It's perfect in the sense that at least I, I made a coherent point, if not by accident, that it's it seems like like the mansion artwork that you brought up. It's like mm-hmm. it seems like it was designed for SCI and then had to be scaled back. And usually it's fine, mm-hmm. especially mm-hmm. like you know I say like the scenery looks better. Like a lot of the things actually are improvement in in AGI. I think like smoother. But then there's certain times where it's like, damn, 
You can almost mm-hmm. feel for the AGI artists where they're like, shit, we're supposed to draw a picture frame of a lady here? Like, how are we going to do mm-hmm. that? <laughs> mm-hmm. Very, very good point. Yeah, I can totally see that now that you've said it. You just unlocked that idea for me. It makes so much more sense. And so, oh, well, you know, I want to mention too, before we find ourselves drifting away from this, this first this topic, which I'm not rushing us out of, but the AGI one has some just bonkers Easter eggs that the SCI one doesn't. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. This game has the weirdest Easter eggs. They got it's they have the the beam me up Easter egg, which is yep. which is probably the most well known of all the Sierra ones. And then the wrap, the King's Quest wrap thing that that <laughs> was, yeah, um, and then and then and then the pirate Easter eggs, which I don't even know what that is. I'm just reading it. If you want to hear what the uh, King's Quest wrap is, just listen to the other episode I recorded about King's Quest Four because I was forced on the spot to do it. Oh wow! Yeah. Should I go get that in editing? No, this is, this is Monday. No, night. it was really yeah. done embarrassing. It was actually so it was so half assed, and I was so shy because it was my first episode that I didn't give it the justice it deserved. And if I had all the self confidence I've gotten over the years from doing the podcast with me, I do a better job. But a, I don't have the lyrics, and b, I'm not going to look them up. Yeah, and c, fuck that shit. Yeah, totally. Nah, I get it. Yeah. Well. Do you have anything else for AGI SCI? There's, uh, I mean, there's a lot of differences, but you you've really got like good experience playing them both, so you, it's more it's more fun, I think, for everybody to hear from you than for me to read stuff off a list more. You don't bend over when you go to like pick up the worm. It didn't bend over for me. There was no like little doo around her head when she'd do any kind of a falling with the sound. Um, in both versions, if you walk, it's okay. In both versions, when the fisherman leaves the wharf, when he's going back to his cabin, you have to wait till he goes to the next screen on the wharf for you to be able to follow him, or he just automatically goes back to sitting on the wharf. But I found in the AGI version, it was also the same for all of the ghosts in the mansion, which wasn't my experience with the SEI version, as in I could trail the ghost from one room to the next, to the next, to the next. As soon as you saw them walk out one door, you'd know for sure they'd be in the next room. And it seemed a bit more chaotic in the other version for some reason, what was your experience? Um, well, real quick on the, fi- since we're, we're on the fisherman sort of, I mean, you said wharf a lot a minute ago, so that yeah. means we're on the fisherman now. Um. <laughs> wharf, wharf. No, this is not a Star Trek episode, but we can put hashtag wharf in now and get a few extra clicks. <laughs> right. Yeah. Every week I try a ridiculous tag out like Fortnite, as if there, there's a big <laughs> crossover audience there, but why not? <laughs> Because we talked about it. We haven't talked about it in over a fortnight. Hashtag fortnight. Right. That's the only time that shit comes up in here. Oh, that's funny. Um, okay. The so fishermen, I just got to say, they make it real hard to want to give them the diamonds. <laughs> yeah, they're like, not the exactly fucking? sweet about it. Yeah. like Because I'd only played this game one other time prior prior to this week. And, and and I was doing as much as I could without any help or sway, even though it was a bit of a time crunch, which is why I eventually did with certain things. But um, like I couldn't get certain things to trigger because I was missing like one single thing kind of moments that I had mm-hmm. to stop and look up. But for the most part, I was going, you know, half figuring it out, half on, on hazy memory. And the fisherman thing, I didn't remember off the bat that that's what I was supposed to do. And, and they do not help you. I mean, she's, she's real mean to us, the, the wife. Um, I, do, Afterwards, do think- she's like, "I just want to go clothes shopping." <laughs> That's it. <laughs> it's fun dance. Um, did you did you get the vibe that the wife was like jealous of Rosella, like being around her husband? Is that is that what the attitude was for? Well, no, but now I'm shipping that as being solid. Yeah, for sure. I could totally <laughs> see that. I never even clued in. I just thought she was kind of like a bit of a bitch, and they were just kind of like. What you doing sniffing around our house, girl? We ain't got food to feed you too, kind of deal. Right, right. That's see, it's almost the 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 me being a guy playing as a as a girl makes you wonder like how many how many things are interpreted differently because of that. Because I'm having fun being Roselle. I'm like walking around. I, I guess I'm like boobies and shit. I'm like, oh look at me. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, you're making this bitch jealous. They don't bounce like they do at the end of three, but you know, they got their own characteristics. They did reel them in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah they did reel them in. Which is good, which is good because it's, you know, uh, I, you know, I, I don't know. I forgot why. I, oh, because yeah, because she's, she can be taken seriously as like, uh, Rosella's a good character too. I don't want to get a sidetrack, but she's, she's like such a well rounded. She's independent and like, look at how she dealt. Like the frog was an asshole to her 
And then later she's just like, I got my priorities. I don't need to be with no man. I got my family like with and I'm moving end. on. Yeah. yeah. So th she's very like, you know, I'm just going to do my thing. Same with like the, the witch. She's like, okay, I'm going to do the things you ask. Even with like Pandora's box, one of the quests at the end, you have to bring her Pandora's box, which can end the world. I mean, you can do it yourself if you just open the lid. And she's just like, you don't even like, you don't get her qualms or anything. She's just like, well, I guess I'm going to go get the box now. Yeah. I, I, I really appreciated that part. Cause she, she <laughs> says, um, she's basically like, she does question it, which is good. Cause it's <laughs> like, that would be an annoying thing to not, question like mm. wait a minute should i really be bringing this lady this box because because the, <laughs> the the letter whatever loses her, her her front for a second she's like i'll have all the power in the world and it's just mm -hmm. like a real like exposition moment and, and 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 i was so relieved when rosello responded as i would have like mm -hmm. should i be doing this like i know this benefits me but hold on this seems a little fucked up. but then her reasoning for going forward while not really you know deep or anything is 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 fitting because she's just like well what the fuck else am i gonna do I mean, mm -hmm. honestly, guys, like I'm, I'm stuck in the middle of this fairy tale island. I got, uh, I'm being, you know, imprisoned by this lady. Like I, I should probably just, you know, at least start making my way towards the box and come up with a plan later. <laughs> I appreciated <laughs> that because it's like, what else are you gonna do? You can't just die there a martyr alone because then your dad dies too, and blah blah blah. You know, who knows? Maybe you can get the box and flip the script on her. But anyway. Um, I like it when you go to get the box and then the mummy case opens and the mummy comes out, but it's like you don't realize the scarab is going to save you from the mummy. So there's that moment when you're like, oh my God, I came right. all this way and now I'm going to get killed by a mummy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you got like one one fingers on escape already. Just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, five, just ready. No, 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 seven. don't. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Such I had I had a lot up. of, I had like 20 save games on this and, and I was even calling them things like Pandora's not so bad, yo. Like it was kind yeah, of fun. Yeah, no, that's always fun. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's half the fun of it. I was saving a lot because yeah, like yeah. I remember a lot of it. I remembered enough to to have have a, have fun with it. But mm -hmm. it, you don't remember things like when exactly you die. That's another note mm -hmm. I had that's really fun in a Sierra game. And then I, I want to get back to Rosella's character after that. You know, to me, um, but I, I find that that some of the writing in this um, on like a rejection surface like when you're getting rejected by the game was really like abusive and gaslighting and hilarious because it mm -hmm. was like you're supposed to look at everything but when you look at something that doesn't matter the game's very like ew why are you looking at this yeah <laughs> there was there's so nothing like, of you, interest game? on the desk yeah. for you right <laughs> now okay and i'm like well i can see things on the desk you even told me what one of those are not for you look away <laughs> yeah, this, this is the same game that, that you can get all the way to the magic fruit that saves your dad and just fucking mm -hmm. eat it and, yeah. and destroy the ending of the game. And the game doesn't tell you that you did. The game's just no. like you feel more vitalized and it tastes great. And yep. <laughs> that's you well know, done, honey. It's not till you get to the very end and you get home and they're like, so where's the fruit? And you're like, ah, shit. <laughs> I knew there was something I did wrong here. <laughs> It's so messed up, but but yet then the, that same game has the balls for when you look at something like, I don't know, like Cupid, like something you should probably yeah. look at and you might need, and it's just like, you don't see anything special here. Yeah, there's nothing. And oh, you're not close enough. In the AGI version, there's so much of that. You're not close enough. You're not close SCI enough. You're there's not close lot. enough. The fucking witch's oh my eyes. God. That was a pain and in yet, the Yeah. Oh yeah, that one. And then, and yet the going down the ladder from the attic after helping Willie the child was super easy because you could pretty much just type climb down ladder from anywhere in the room and she'll walk over and just climb down that shit. Oh wow, see, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. And oh, that's the other thing. I had so much trouble in the game. Give money to Miser, give give money to Miser. Give you, It doesn't understand what you mean. It's this game wants tickle or it wants give money or it wants, it wants that. It's not asking for the second half of any sentences. I didn't mm. learn about the tickle uvula till one short eyes video. And they're like, uh, you just have to write tickle kids. And I'm like, oh, okay. Huh. I mean, you can, can you, you can F3 though, right? Can you, uh, I, I know you uh, yeah. can in AGI, but can you in SCI? You can definitely F3. And yeah, that works just fine. Jump F3, jump F3, jump F3. Although I much prefer the space bar. <laughs> I feel like the F3 thing is, is like, 
is oddly not well known because I've seen a lot of YouTube playthroughs of different AGI and SCI games where they, they keep typing it every time. Yeah, my F3 is not, I have to change the setting actually. My uh, my F3 turns up the brightness of my screen, so I have to hit yeah, FN, F3. Yeah. yeah, so I'm sure there's a way to, to, it's just you don't think about it till you're playing the game, then you're like, oh, I'm not going to quit the game so that I can fix it. Right. Because when, you know, like who does that? Nobody does that. Yeah, no. Um, oh, and the music for Lilith Goons was very, very different. The music in the Troll game was different. There's a lot of pitch bending in the Minstrel's music. So it's like they're using the pitch bender on the little thing while they're playing. And also, one of my favorite parts outside of night falling in the game is when the sun comes up through the windows after you kill the evil fairy. As the windows get brighter and the room lights up again. I love the colors they use for the sunrise. Very cool. Maybe we could just chat about the game itself a little bit. Uh, why is it the best? Why do I have a big box of it sitting right here, smiling at me, making me so happy to know that I own it? Why is it that some people are so excited by this game that they buy copies of it for all of their friends? I I think it's the world. It's a world that you want to explore. It's really fun. It, it's like I, I don't I don't have nostalgia for this game, but I still. Having having experience, let's say with Sierra, I still immediately feel comfortable like taking the keys. Like oh, I'm so glad to be back in a in a Sierra world. And and if I had nostalgia for this game, I'm sure it would be even more concentrated. To I'm so glad to be back in this world. Period. But it's like it, it gives you this just this feeling of like I you know I, I this place feels safe and wondrous and mysterious and a lot of different things at once. The world itself feels gigantic. There's so many different things to see and things to look at if you want to like it, it really in in the modern day of playing adventure games it bears a second playthrough back in the day i'd say just you want to spend a full year on it you've probably looked at everything but nowadays mm-hmm. with that tendency to get through a game and, and you know kind of direct line thinking as as a predator to, to go from a to b directly as quick as possible it's like we have that weird instinct to almost just like you know beat the thing solve the thing get done with the thing and that's so counterproductive to what adventure games really are they really are more to be just uh, absorbed and taken in slowly like a sunset or whatever as opposed to you know a, a quick a quick fix sort of thing so it bears replaying this game just to go to the different rooms and just to use the use the look command uh, mm-hmm. frankly just to go back and walk around the world and just look at stuff it's, it builds it just gradually builds this gigantic world with, with every description. And and then the other thing I'll say, and then I'm going to hand it over to you and your thoughts on it, is is Rosella. Again, I promised earlier in the episode I would come back to, to her, her as a character. But before I get into anything of my own personal thing, I kind of want your un... You know, I don't know, just not, not, without being littered by my thoughts first this time, like <laughs> what your thoughts mm-hmm. are on Rosella as a character in this game. Right. Um... I think she's thrust into action and in a way that wasn't represented again in King's Quest Seven, as she's sitting there singing about her want to go for an adventure. It's like, girl, you have adventured most thoroughly. But yeah, yeah I mean, she's, she's just she's taken everything at face value and she's understanding that there's a lot of gray lines. I think she gets it. She gets it with the unicorn. She feels bad at the end. You know, she ends up capturing a unicorn using Cupid's arrow and guiding it up to the evil witch and, and the unicorn gets trapped. And even though at the end you free the unicorn, it says like the trust is, is no longer there in their eyes. Like I think she feels the weight of those activities and I think she has the drive, the love for her father. So as far as like a hero, heroine and like a, a good role model for me, and like, even with a little bit of that, you know what? I don't give a shit. Like, I just need to get this done. And and yeah, yeah, there's going to be some consequences and it's unfortunate, but you know, I think, I think I can solve something and just make it happen. That that's, that's something that I've taken into my own life. Like I'm going to be in the moment a little, I'm going to say, yes, I'm going to go fly to that wild Island and, and see what happens. And I think I trust myself to know in the moment on the spot that I'm going to do the right thing. So I, I think that, you know, it's it's a cool yeah. way to to look at things like Rosella does. That's lovely. Yeah, it's lovely because it brings brings back to the portion where we talked about Pandora's box and and how Rosella handles that. Um, in in the sense that she 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 lets you, the player, know that 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 she's she's got more character than to just mindlessly give this evil woman this this powerful box, and 
and it's because she she trusts herself to do the right thing when the time comes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just I think she's a really well written character, and that's probably why I like this King's Quest Four the most is because of Rosella. Mm-hmm. Sweet, I'm out of breath. And the night cycle. That's another. Mm-hmm. That's the other reason. Um, I got a few notes I didn't say during the episode. Uh, first, this is the first game with mou- uh, with a mouse control. You might have said this, Anna. I'm not sure. Um, I think you just brought up the mouse, but I just want to mm-hmm. say it was officially it was the first one to have like the mouse in the game. So it's still text parser. Um, there's an, there is a point and click version on adventuregamestudio.co.uk. So if you go to AGS, somebody uh, made a very very loving made with love uh, point and click remake of this game. And mm-hmm. because it's on Twitter, I can say that Stephen Alexander has teased our friend at Infamous Quest. Um, him and Sean Mills, uh, author of the Sierra Adventure, have, have teased a couple of months ago, back in May, um, a, a VGA remake of King's Quest. And so point and click, hand painted backgrounds, and it looks amazing. Yeah, I saw a promo up on X a while ago, and uh, I, I feel weird calling it X. But anyways, yeah, there was a couple of teasers, haven't heard any since, but uh, hopeful that that's going to be a thing. Yeah, it looked amazing. Um, and that's that's pretty much it. Uh, Willie William Goldstein did the soundtrack. He also did Fame, which I think is that "We're Gonna Live Forever" song mm-hmm. from the TV show Fame. I'm not gonna sing it. Um, <laughs> Graham's nostrils. We covered that. Janessa. Uh... Okay, that's today's show. Thank you guys for listening. Um, Anna's Anna's not here. She's 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 not peeing. Is what she's not doing. And so thanks for listening. But we're a page in a group on Facebook. Check us out there. Thank you to our Patreons. Forget about that Facebook. Thank you, Patreons, very much for your support. It means the world to us. Um, extra special thanks uh, to to Brian and Michael. You guys are awesome. Thank you for supporting us. Check out Death Defiant. I've been listening to that again this week. It's so good. If you're going to drive somewhere, you should be listening to, to Death Defiant. Latest record. It's so fun. Okay. Um, Check us out on Facebook and Instagram and whatever. Doesn't none of this. I don't feel like doing the rest of this. We're on Twitter at CGG Podcast uh, at Phantom Fellows. Uh, mail at Classic Gamers. Still got dot com. Us send us stuff. Uh, check out our friends in the Adventure Game Hotspot Network. Check out the Adventure Game Hotspot Network themselves, but also Space Quest Historian, Adventure Game Geek, who's going to be on our next episode. One Short Eye, Conversations with Curtis. I said that like there was one more, but there's not. But check them all out. Links to their latest works, if you will, is in our description below. Uh, one Short Eye has a really good uh, video on Colonel's Bequest you guys got to check out. And Geek is back with some new stuff. Not to mention Conversation with Curtis. He always has the best interviews. How Burwood was really cool. So, okay. I said the last name wrong probably. Bur- Burwood. Bur- 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 doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Listen, you guys are putting a lot of pressure on me to finish this off correctly. <laughs> I'm starting to crack. The Wishlist Star Game, the, the Phantom Fellows. If you haven't already, then there's a, a link in this episode to vote for it on GOG. That would be that would be amazing. And thank you guys already for everybody that has. Like, just a quick time out. Because is that like 83 or something like that last I checked? That's, I feel like that's really good. Um, and so I really, really appreciate that. Um, I'm supposed to frame it like it's never enough so that everybody just keeps doing the thing. But you guys will do it if you feel like it. Also leave us a review for this podcast on like Apple, just tap the five star thing and be like, these guys are dicks. Uh, <laughs> I mean, depends on actually, maybe just say how you actually feel instead of that. That would be funny though. Like if anybody does that, I, I will laugh. I'll be like, yeah, nice. And, and then I'll probably move on with my day, but I'll appreciate it very much at the time. Okay. That's, that's all. That's all we got uh, earlier. I, I was talking a lot of shit about King's quest three people. Look, listen, I don't even know what a psychopath is by definition. All right, how can I call you something and mean it if I don't know what it is? Is it irresponsible to use words I don't really know like that? Probably, okay? And honestly, I'm going to have a stern talking with myself later. Going to be like, what are you What are you doing, man? You're, you're, you've been embarrassing yourself for 180-some episodes. <laughs> and, and whatever, I'm all done. So don't do murder. Wow.